What's God's will for your life? What's God's will for my life? I mean, how many of us have asked that same question over the years? So many of us want to know what God's will is for our life because we know that as believers in Jesus Christ that we're called to a purpose. We're called to a higher purpose. And as followers of Jesus Christ, we want to know what that purpose is because God's calling, God's will for our life is the greatest aspirations that any of us as believers in Jesus Christ can have. I have gotten this wrong a time or two. I've been walking with the Lord now for almost 20 years. So to think that I would always be on course with God is ridiculous. Life changes. Seasons change. Events happen. People come into your life and people leave your life. So to think that God's will for your life is going to be 100% the same at all times is just simply crazy. You know, God's will for our lives, it changes throughout our life and it certainly is not one size fits all. So today I just want to welcome you to my channel. If this is the first time that you have stopped by here, what you will find is faith-based content that encourages you to deepen and grow your own personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And today we're going to be talking about God's will and how to know what it is that he has specifically for you to do as his true follower. So let's get into it. All right, so most people think it's just this one thing or that one thing. Mainly when we're young believers, we don't know what God's will is for our life. And we believe that that is like the biggest question that needs to be answered is what's God will for my life? We have to stop allowing our heads to overthink this thing. We, we got to stop overthinking God's will for our life because it's not that complicated. I mean, I don't mean to laugh because honestly, when we're new believers, this is a huge question for many of us. And sometimes we spend countless hours or days or weeks or years trying to figure it out. We have to start by allowing our peace to lead us. We have to be led by the Holy Spirit and not by our feelings, okay? We have to be led by the Holy Spirit because he has like direct access to the Father, direct access to the Lord Jesus Christ. So today I just want to share a few examples with you of how our story unfolds with the Lord when we are led by his word, when we're led by the peace that passes understanding, when we're led by the Holy Spirit, lots of things are going to take place in our life. You know, when I got saved, I feel like I got real lazy. I mean, seriously, I must have asked God a thousand times, God, what's my part? I literally didn't know what I was supposed to do now that I was a follower of Jesus Christ. I know it sounds crazy, but I lived my whole life making things happen or trying to make things happen. And once I became a believer in Jesus Christ, I thought, well, that's it. That's it. I'm a believer now and God's just going to make these things happen in my life. And it couldn't be further from the truth. Like we don't get to just remove ourselves from our life and our aspirations, from our goals, from God's purpose for our life. Once we become saved, we can't just sit on the couch and wait for Jesus to walk into our living room to grab us by the hand and take us to the next thing. No, we have got to be growing and maturing in our faith with God. And I'll put a link to the video that I shared last week about our faith and the levels of faith and how we are to grow 
in that level of faith as we mature and grow in the Lord. So once I started studying God's word, I was reading his word and I was praying and I was around other believers and I began to notice that I wasn't just supposed to stop pushing. I wasn't supposed to stop pursuing things now that I was a follower of Jesus Christ, okay? I started to pay more attention to how the Lord was leading me and I started stepping into these moments and doing what needed to be done at that particular time. For instance, I attended uh, this church and they needed someone to uh, do the announcements, right? The person who was doing them was actually leaving. He had gotten married and moved on to a different church, a different town. So now that spot was empty and I didn't go to the senior pastor and ask to do that spot, ask to fill that position. But the church leaders knew that I was able to speak in front of people because I had uh, done that throughout my careers. You know, I had uh, been asked to give talks in front of people and I was able to do it. And they knew that I was able to talk with people at least one-on-one -on -one or even in small groups because I had been fellowshipping at that church for like 10 years, maybe eight years, I guess, by this time. So they asked me if I would do the openings uh, to do the announcements. And I, I said that I would, but part of that responsibility was uh, writing down prayers. And then when it became prayer time, the senior pastor would pray, but then I was supposed to close that, uh, that prayer time and either finish what uh, he hadn't prayed for on the list and then just really close it out. And when it came time for that, the first time, I couldn't do it. Like literally nothing would come out of my mouth. And there was this guy sitting um, beside me across the aisle on this other pew and he looked at me and he's like, you're supposed to close it out in prayer. And I was like, I know, I know. But literally nothing would come out of my mouth. And I didn't know that I wasn't able to pray out loud in front of a group of people until I was presented with that opportunity and I didn't do it. But eventually as time went on and I continued to be in that position at church, I was able to pray out loud and I was able to finish that prayer time after the senior pastor and close it out in prayer. And, you know, I'm still doing that position at our church. You know, it's the same church, the same people. I mean, they fluctuated here and there, but I've been doing it now for probably nine, close to 10 years. So also during that time, I felt like God was calling me to preach. I felt like he had given me these messages that I was to share with the church. And so I had mentioned it to the senior pastor and he believed that God was also calling me to preach, to deliver messages to the church. And I had real peace about it at the time. You know, at the beginning when I had been ordained, I had peace about it, but I got this thought in my head about women pastors. And so I Googled it, right? And it was a big mistake because it really set me back a lot. But now I know that that topic is a hot topic in the church. And I believe that we are going to debate and agree on this issue until Christ returns okay I was ordained on my 40th birthday and I had given many messages before that time and God had really used that time to prepare me I believe for women's ministry because to be honest my husband isn't like a sold out Jesus follower okay he just isn't he's a believer but he's not wanting to be a pastor's husband. 
Now, I say that jokingly, and I'm sorry if you don't think that's funny, but I don't want to be a pastor of a church where my husband isn't 100% behind it. Now, if my husband steps up and wants to be like the pastor of that church and I can just be an associate pastor or just under his authority, under his uh, protection, then I would absolutely do it. But God has not provided that opportunity for me yet. So instead of like just plowing through God and being like, I'm going to do it anyway, I'm just waiting on God. I'm submitting to my husband. I'm submitting to the authority, the God's authority, which is the church, Christ, our husbands, and then us. And not in a demeaning way and not in a better than you way, but that's just the way God has ordained the church. And if you don't like it, you can take that up with God. But for me, and in order for me to live in that peace that passes understanding, then I need to be in God's order. So right now, I'm following God by putting him first and then by ministering or just being there for my husband and then by being there for my kids and being there for my circle of influence and then being there for my online ministry. So that's how I am following God right now. And that is where I believe God has me in his will for this season of my life. Now, what is it going to look like three, five, 10 years from now? I don't know. But I trust God enough to put my life in his hands and allow him to decide what my next season of life looks like. Because I believe that our calling changes throughout the seasons of our life. Not for all of us, but for at least some of us, we're not going to be doing the exact same thing from the time we get saved until the time we go to heaven. Do I regret anything that I have done with the Lord or for the Lord from the time of salvation till now? No, of course not. You know, I may have gotten off course a few times, but God never disowned me for that. Like I'm not removed from his book of life in heaven because I have gotten it wrong a couple times. So I want to encourage you, if you feel like you have gotten it wrong with the Lord sometimes, have faith that God still has a plan for your life. I mean, seek him and he will give you the desires of your heart when your heart's desire is to please him. Okay, that's how that works. When the Lord says that he will give you the desires of your heart, that means when your desires, your heart's desires line up with his desires, those desires will come to pass in your life. Okay, he graciously guides us. And when we step outside of his will, when we get off track, he graciously guides us back into his will that he has for us. He literally uses everything that we go through to bring him glory. Listen, nothing is wasted when we wholeheartedly put our trust in the Lord and do what he has us doing at that particular time. You know, does that mean that we're going to do everything perfectly? Of course not. Of course not. Life is messy, okay? Life is full of ups and downs, but God is not surprised or caught off guard by any of it. He knows the end from the beginning. He is the alpha and the omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And he's got the entire world, the whole world in his hands. Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. God knows your future. He knows what plans he has for you. So how do you find out what those plans are? 
Well, Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Okay, we can't do this Christian thing half-heartedly, right? We can't have one foot in the world in one foot in our Christian life. I know because I've tried to live like that. I've I, I've personally lived like that for quite a while and it's frustrating, it, it's irritating, it's unpleasant, it's, it's not peaceful, it's a very difficult road to live. So I have been praying that the Lord would just help me to seek him wholeheartedly, like that I would be single-minded because we know that the word tells us that a double-minded man should not think that he will receive anything from the Lord. We find that in James. I want to receive from the Lord, so therefore I want to be single-minded. I want to be focused on the Lord and what he has for me so that he can continue to bless me throughout my entire life, throughout my life with him. So do you want to know what plans God has for you? Then I would encourage you to seek him with your whole heart and he will guide you into the will that he has for your life. We live our best life when we live our life for an audience of one. Listen, people will judge you. Mankind will judge you. It, it, it's just a fact of life, okay? You're gonna have people who are gonna walk this Christian life with you and that was, those are great people to be around. But then you're gonna have people who think it's utterly ridiculous that you would even consult in God to find out what he has planned for your life, okay? Okay, I, it, it's just the way it is. So I want to encourage you to make God the number one priority of your life and all other things will be given to you. Matthew says, seek first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be given on to you. They're given on to you by the Lord, okay? There's some things that you're going to have to really try hard, that you're really going to have to press into. But then there's some things that the Lord is just going to give you. I know because my life, I spent many years in the self-help market trying to make things happen in my life, trying to be a motivational speaker, trying to be the best me that I could be. And those years are not wasted. God still uses that time that I spent like growing and maturing my thinking. And he uses that for his glory. Now that I'm a Christian, I, I share encouraging words because I know the power of the mind. That's why I do it because I know the benefits of renewing your mind, of being positive, of seeking first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be given to you. Like I, I don't strive for all these other things anymore. I strive to know the Lord and doors of opportunity just blow open. I know if you're not there yet, please continue to keep seeking the Lord. Keep going after him and you will be in his will because his will for you is to know him and to love him with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. And every other thing that he gives you to do is such a blessing. So I just pray that that word encourages you to keep going. Keep going when things get hard. Keep going when you feel like you have just fallen too, fallen too far from his grasp, from his grace, from his mercy. Because I can tell you, you will never far, you will never fall too far from God. He will always, always receive you when you return back to him. Always no matter what. And today, I just want to pray over you so that we can just seal this message in our hearts and minds and start to live it out. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your word, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit because you have given him 
to help us to live this Christian life, Lord. I just pray that each one of us will open your word and allow you to minister to each one of us individually and specifically. And Lord, I pray that you would give us a hunger and a thirst for your word that only you can fill. Lord, we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Take care. I'll see you next Wednesday.